For my current project, I'm building a Nissan 350Z and converting that into the movie version that was used in Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift. For this conversion, I will need to remove the side skirts, the rear bumper, of course, also the other side skirt on the other side. The front bumper will need to be removed and replaced along with the hood too. For this conversion, I of course need a new body kit with all these body panels. I was contacted by Decal Shop, who made a new body kit for the veil side version that was used in the Tokyo Drift movies. In that body kit, you get a lot of the exterior body parts and also some for the interior. The exterior parts are uh, the front bumper, rear bumper, side skirts, over fenders for all four corners, even a new spoiler and some side mirrors too. With a lot of these resin aftermarket body kits, you do need to make sure that they actually fit. Some of them actually shrink quite a lot and even bend or warp out of shape. In this case, I always like to uh, offer the parts up to the body itself to see if the shape or even the size is generally correct before moving on. Because if you start cutting up the body itself, you are pretty much too far gone and it's unfixable or not even returnable to stock. So making sure that the body parts actually fit is really important. Now in this case I need to remove a lot of these stock body parts, or in this case the Nismo body parts, for the new ones to fit on. And I always like to start marking off where I need to cut before actually starting the uh, operation itself and cutting off all of the stock parts to make room for the new aftermarket parts. There are multiple different ways of removing these stock parts and I'm going to take you through the most common ones and the ones I actually like to use or have used in the past. Now first off I'd like to start by scribing out all of the panel lines to make them a bit deeper, a bit more pronounced and easier to see and use after you've cut off the stock parts and fit up the new ones. So the first method is actually just to use the scriber or even a knife to generally start carefully cutting off all of the body parts along the panel lines themselves. Just going through the panel lines as many times as needed until you have completely removed all of the plastic and have gone through on the other side of the panel line. Another method that I like to use is actually with a saw blade and then I'm not going to be cutting into the actual panel line itself as the saw blade will widen that gap and make it very uneven and not really looking good or even have the new parts fit up really nicely. So I like to cut up on the part that actually needs to be removed. Therefore you do lose the stock part but it does have a cleaner line left off after you have completed the removal. Now before that, I do like to just describe out the panel lines, as I said before, just to make them a bit deeper and actually usable later on, as you're not completely gonna be removing this panel line, but actually just keeping a little bit of plastic left in there as a sort of spacer. Once that is completed, you can move on to carefully starting the saw blade action and removing the excess parts. So with the first piece now sawed off, I like to remove the main bulk material by simply cutting it off with some pliers. You are now still left with some excess material that is left over from the stock body part and that needs to still be removed. I like to do this with a file, but you could also use a sanding stick or even sandpaper if that is what you have to use. But in this case, I like using the file as it is a uh, rigid piece doesn't really bend all that much and it leaves a nice clean straight line and also removes the material really really fast so it doesn't even take up all that much time. So on the other side we now have removed the entire panel line and therefore simply cutting it off removes the remaining piece and you have a clean cut. Now you don't have any material left over there so it is a simple fact of having it to fit perfectly and uh, not having any room to play or adjust. Now one of the other methods instead of using a saw blade is actually an electric cutter. In this case, the Cutra Wonder Cutter that was sent over to me by Cutra themselves. It is a pretty expensive tool, but once you do have it, I actually found out that I use it quite a lot. Now, I, uh, if I'm totally honest, I probably would not have bought it myself, but after using it for a couple of months, it does add a lot to the actual workbench and the tools in my workbench and it saves me a lot of time 
by removing the parts a lot faster than with the other methods. So with this one, the same as the saw blade, it does leave a pretty rough cut around the edges and it does need to be refined. What I like to do is color in the panel lines so I have a clear visual of where I need to cut or sand to and then remove even more bolt material with uh, either a small knife, the files, or in this case, you can just clip off some of the pieces with a flush cut plier. Now I then like to sand off uh, along that panel line just to have the actual panel line itself colored in and have an even clearer visual of where I need to sand or file to and then just go to town with the files carefully creeping up onto the black line itself. Now when you're creeping up to the actual line itself it is very important to keep test fitting the parts and ensuring that the, t the actual fit is where you want it to be. Now if you've removed too much material that is kind of hard to go back as you need to add new material and fix it that way. Now with this one completed I can move on to the one on the rear hatch and also the other side. And Once that is completed I can fit the actual entire bumper itself to see if it is completely in place where it needs to be or if it needs a little more adjustment. With the rear bumper fitting the way that I want it, I can move on to the next part, and that is the over fender and side skirt. Before doing that, I needed to remove a small lip that is specific to the Nismo version, and I figured that would have been enough, but in this case, it turns out I actually need to remove more of that quarter panel for the entire over fender to fit nice and flush. There is a small edge on the inside here, and that piece needs to be removed from the quarter panel, in order for the over fender to fit on nicely. With some mechanical measuring calipers, I'm actually gonna be scribing a line on the quarter panel itself to know which part needs to be removed and how much, of course, I need to remove. So I'm carefully just measuring the inside of the body panel, setting the calipers, tightening them down so they don't move, and then using the calipers for what they are not supposed to be used for, and that is a scribe to make a nice line on the quarter panel for me to give a visual on what needs to be removed. So the actual scribe itself is pretty clear, but just to make it even clearer, a black marker is done on top to show a permanent black line. So before the actual cut itself, just make sure that this is exactly that what needs to be removed and doesn't extrude too much outside of the actual over fender as that would leave some ugly gaps. Now again, just like removing all of the body parts on the side, there are various different methods of using actual uh, or removing actual quarter panel material. The simplest one, uh, but also the most dangerous one is using a knife and just scraping it off one by one in small strips. You can of course use a file too. I use a rounded file for this one. And then the final option is uh, a bit more quick, but also a little bit on the dangerous side and that is using an actual rotary tool. So just like all the other body panels, make sure that you do plenty of test fits to see if it actually is where it needs to be. If you need to refine it a little bit more, remove a little bit material, or if you've made a small mistake and removed a bit too much. Once that is all completed, it is time to move on to the actual gluing part of this project. And before doing that, I like to sand up the material that is going to be glued together a little bit for the glue to have a nice bite to it. And then use some actual Bob Smith Industries CA glue or super glue that bonds both materials together pretty easily and has a nice stick to it. In this case, I'm just gluing the center piece of the bumper first and then the outside pieces later on to make sure that everything is carefully lined up and that I'm not doing four or five things at the same time and losing the attention and carefully uh, placing it where it needs to be and not having it shift on me. 
Once that bumper is on, I can move on to the side piece, again gluing it from the rear part first and the over fender, and then later on focusing on the side skirt piece and gluing that in too. On the inside, it dis does need a little bit more reinforcement, so I'm using some small styrene strips and adding that on there just to have it reinforced a bit better and stay in place permanently and be a bit more rigid. So now the rear bumper, side skirt, and also the rear over fender are on. I can move on to the rest of the pieces by again removing them the same as I did before, removing the main bulk material, then sanding up to the line carefully, test fitting the parts a lot of times, and then actually gluing them in place permanently. With the front hood, the front hood, with the actual hood now on, I can move on to gluing on the front bumper, and once that front section is now rigid again, I can move on to the side skirts or over fenders on the front and finalizing this. Again, of course, the other side needs to be done as well, but that is pretty much the same in a mirror look. Now, there are still quite a few things that need to be tidied up. Some of the panel lines aren't really perfect where some of the aftermarket parts meet up with the stock body kit. That needs to be filled in, smoothed out, sanded, and cleaned up. But that is for a later stage in the actual build series itself. I hope you had some useful information out of this video and if you have any questions about something specific, leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to do my best and help you guys out.